Runaway Robot. Okay. Um, we're gonna do things and stuff today. Things and stuff, chat. Things and things and stuff. Um, per the request of of some of the people in in the community here, uh, you know, Runaway Robot D D and D type ish community. Um, there's been there's been a, a request for for things that um pertain to roll twenty as a whole and demonstrations of those things because not everyone uh, knows how to use them. Not everyone knows how to use them, and I get that. Uh, I've had ample amounts of practice now due to running a show weekly for uh, almost over a year now. Uh, so that's, well, yeah, almost over a year now. So that's good. We'll do some things. Hey, sandwiches. Hey, Q. What's up, guys? How are you? Happy Friday. So I've got myself a, a nice pumpkin, pumpkin ale here and, uh, some water. And we're going to talk about Roll20, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, you're more than welcome to ask any questions about any of the things that we're going to take a look at today. And we're going to probably do a little bit of prep. For and my, I know my face just got really overexposed light wise because I changed what my camera was looking or what my uh, screen was here. Um, so we're going to do all of those things and we're probably going to end up prepping some for the one shot harvest. Um, so if you guys don't know what that is, I'm going to go ahead and drop that in here. Uh, on October 23rd, which is next Tuesday, we'll be running a horror esque one shot here on this channel will be my first quote-unquote horror game that I have uh, prepped and played. It'll be interesting. It'll be a good time. Um, I don't really know what else to what else to preface this with because uh, I think the people that had actually asked for this thing are, are not necessarily here. But <clears throat> I am recording this here, so uh, we'll, we'll do it as if we were going to do a, a, a video of some kind, right? So... Uh, let's go ahead and head to the um, the map builder here. So this is roll 20. This is roll 20. Uh, this is the basic starting screen of roll 20. To, in the middle here, we've got a bunch of random squares, a grid outline of things. And to the right, we have our chat screen where you can do your rolls of, you know, your 1d20, etc. Uh, you can also do slash r for your, uh, your die rolls and things like that. Um... This is this is kind of the basic outline of what roll twenty looks like. Hey, Jason, what's up, bud? Um, so yeah, look at this basics. I think I was thinking about this earlier. Is like, okay, what are we gonna go over first? Tools. Tools are obviously the easiest thing to look over here. Select and move. Select and move is gonna select whatever you've got here. And you know what? I'm gonna go over here real quick because I turned this up too high. Hey, look, it's music inside roll twenty. We're gonna get that to that in a little bit. Um. You can select and move whatever you've got on the screen. Currently, we don't have anything on the screen. That's fine. Um, but it allows you to select and move tokens, map pieces, or whatever. Well, how do you know that you're selecting any of those things? Well, you have layers. You have your map and background layer. This is basically like if you ever use Photoshop or Paint.net or anything like that. You have layers of, of vi visual things that you can take a look at. Uh, your base layer is going to be your background. Your object and token layer is going to be your objects and tokens. And uh, the layer above that that no one else can see, none of your players are able to see, is your GM info and overlay layer. That's a really interesting layer because you can set up stuff that just doesn't exist on the screen until you move it into a particular layer. And we'll talk about how you do that as well. Uh, and the last one is dynamic lighting. Dynamic lighting is a layer that you get if you have the pro version or the paid version of Roll20.net, uh, which I do. It's $5 a month. Uh, you get extra storage space for, for various tokens and maps and things like that. And additionally, you get dynamic lighting. We'll go over how that works as well. It's a little bit more tedious to set up dynamic lighting, but if my audience has given me any feedback for this kind of stuff, um, dynamic lighting is pretty cool. It's a lot of fun to use and it's interesting. So it adds a whole nother layer of stuff. Scream for you scream for you when you get to how you add your own music. Oh, your own music. Oh, I don't add my own music. Uh, but I'll show you how I do add music to the game. So that'll be that'll be a different thing. Playing a new PC setup for a friend. Okay, cool. 
Um, cool. Yeah. So then you have on the next one, you have, you can draw shapes, you can draw freehand, you can draw polygons and et cetera. So obviously easiest thing you can do, uh, freehand draw, just take a black one here. You can just, oh, look at that. You can draw whatever the heck you want. Um, you do need to be careful, uh, because sometimes if you want to like actually delete all of your drawings, it will delete everything on the page. You have to be very careful about that and be careful about what layer you actually draw on. An object and token layer is, is something that you can generally like kind of interact with. If you go and select, you can be like, you can drag it around places. What I use this for more, more often than not is if I was going to draw a shape on the object and token layer, I'm going to draw a shape and I want it to be a, a, a shape of a, of a specific size. Let's say it's like fireball or something like that. I need a radius. Um, so you can draw a general rectangle, or you can hold alt for your, your circle and ellipse. So basically, I'll just come in here and, and draw a circle. Cool, great. It's not necessarily perfect, but you can kind of eyeball this, because each square is quote-unquote five feet. Now, this is, a, this is a good point to bring in, okay, we have a measuring tool. Well, this measuring tool lets you know how far things are away from each other. Great, so this is 20 feet this way to this way, and we've kind of overshot it a little bit on the other direction well lucky for us we can select this and we can kind of squeeze it down just a little bit like that and now we have 20 this way and 20 this way of uh some kind of circle square ellipse whatever and because it's on the object and token layer we can kind of just select it and move it around and place it over things and give ourselves a radius of some kind that our players may or may not need um so that's kind of how that works uh, drawing wise. Again, polygons and lines. Um, this is useful, I think, more often than not for drawing your own dungeons and maps and things like that. Uh, personally, for me, when I use Roll20 and when I do the shows, uh, I use pre-made maps or tile sets and I make those maps uh, in into Roll20. And we'll talk about those kinds of things, pre-made maps and tile sets and how to get those and where you find those and what to do with them uh, in just a bit. So this is this is kind of how you would draw a, a dungeon or a, a room or a map of some kind uh, is by using the polygons and lines. If you want to snap it to the grid, so like you can just draw like point to point kind of like that. Uh, control Z also works wonders for this. General, like if you, you draw a thing and you don't like it, you can Control Z it out. Um, if you hold Shift, it'll snap to the 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 closest points. So if I if I hold Shift here and I click down here, see how I clicked a little bit above? It still snapped to the line. And so this is this is kind of how you would end up drawing some kind of room of some kind, right? And then, uh, but if you wanted to, like, let's say you. Oh, I completed it, so it, it closed the circle here. Um, if you wanted to, you know, draw like a... Oh, here's 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 my room, right? I'm going to start like this, and I want the door to be here. Uh, and then I'm going to start it here. Excuse me. Right-click to end the drawing so it doesn't continue again. And then you can uh, continue going on your merry way, doing other things. And you can connect other drawings like that over on the other side. So when you right click, the drawing ends, right? So I can go like that and then, you know, click down here, go this way, but then I can end the drawing, right? But remember, if you want to snap it to the grid, you have to hold shift here, right? There you go. Cool, clear drawings. Additionally, uh, things you can do, I used to do all of my DM prep on a tile set like this. And type, typey, type, type, type. And you can have various uh, labels for things or text boxes of, of certain kinds. Um, and generally what I think people use this for more often than not is if we were in, let's say, a GM overlay or something like that, you would label various rooms as like encounters or give yourself notes as a DM to describe what that room looks like or what that place looks like or if they're wandering around a dungeon of some kind if there's enemies in there like gives yourself a little clues about like oh it's room x and they need to find this and this and that's generally how the text box of that is is used um and that's pretty that's pretty much all you really need to know about about those 
Um, and it's it's kind of just trial and error. You play around with it a little bit. There's more that we'll go into with the drawing portions of this when we start discussing dynamic lighting. Okay, so that'll be that'll be one of those things that we get into in a little bit later. Um, so after you have all the drawing and whatever, this is just the zoom in on the map. Uh, you have the option to figure that out here or in the top right hand of your screen, which you guys can barely see on the far right hand side because it's almost clipped off on mine. Uh, you can scroll in and out. Great. Uh, this is, they just updated this one. Uh, and I love, I love this little option right here as a DM. You can hide your measurements from other people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so now you, they don't know what you're measuring. Uh, snap to center uh, is just measure center of block to center of block. Uh, everything again is in five foot increments on here. Uh, you can change that if you go to your page settings. You can get your scale units to something else if you'd like. Uh, you can also set them up as hexes. Page size can be changed up here as well. Uh, the background can even be changed. Generally, after I like do a map or whatever, if it has like extra space, I'll I'll end up making the map background black. You can change the color of the of the uh, the crosshairs, I guess, of the of the grid pattern. Um, yeah, and then we'll come down here into advanced fog of war dynamic lighting in a little bit. All right, so we'll we'll discuss that in a little bit. Uh, actual fog of war non-advanced uh, is a little bit different and has to be manually done. Um, and I'm not sure if we're going to get into that too much because I don't necessarily have a whole lot of experience with this because I've been using dynamic lighting for so long. Uh, again, if you want to create a new page, you you know, click new page. You can rename it into something else. Be like, oh, this is, you know, dungeon one. And you hit enter and there it exists, right? And you can change all that stuff from there. Cool. Uh, deleting a page is just down at the bottom. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, so you have your snap to corner options for measurement, or you have your center to center, or you can literally just have a free point to point measurement. Cool. Um, so there you go. That's kind of just how that works. So this is the fog of war reveal. Um, and like I said, I'm not super well versed in this. We can enable it though real quick. You get to see through it because you're the DM. So it's it's not as opaque as what everyone else would want. Well, what everyone else will see. All your players will just see nothing. This is just straight up black. All right. They don't see anything. Uh, but on your end, you can see a little bit. So you can reveal uh, areas. Uh, and I think if you just highlight the area, it ends up being revealed. So... The traditional fog of war in this uh, is manual, which is, it's, it's you know, you can also hide the area after you reveal it. So if you do like this, you can be like, oh, I'm going to manually hide the area again. You can do that as well. It, it, it ends up being a little bit more uh, tedious than, than I would personally like. Um, the polygon one, you can, like, specifically have a, a certain shape that you want. Obviously, this is not the shape that you want. And then you right-click, and then it will clear it out like that. Uh, so, in a in a better, better context of this. Again, I'm holding shift to snap to various portions of the, the grid line here. Uh, and I want to say, oh, let's say I want to reveal a map like this. Great, you can. Cool stuff. Um... So there we go. Um, I'm noticing now that that in this selection of this song that I have, uh, it has weird background stuff to it. So we're gonna go back to this one because this is a great traditional one. Um, so after that, you have this, and this is a DM's bread and butter for battle. This is turn order. Uh, what I'm gonna do real quick before we address turn order is turn off the Fog of War. Okay. We're back to a, a blank screen here. And, and what you can do for your players, if you don't want Fog of War on at all, you can just do Global Illumination. What this means is that they can see everything on the map right away. Okay, so they can do that all the time. Uh, and that's, again, a dynamic lighting thing, and we'll get into how that kind of works. So there's no tokens on the map. Oh, no, this is a problem. Well, lucky for us, we can find some tokens. Um, Let's do a guard why not 
Uh, we have a black guard, blue drake, regular... We're just gonna grab the regular guard here. And we'll talk about NPCs and, and things like that uh, in a little bit. So, we got a guard, and you gotta be able to select him. We dropped him in on the objects and tokens. He's got a health pool. He's got a, a uh, an AC. And he's uh, he's got a little health bar that you can see as the DM. Your players don't see the health bar. Okay? So don't worry about the players being able to see, like, oh, the, how much health did I knock off this guy? They can't see that. Um, the way that you get these tokens on the right-hand side here through Roll20 is by purchasing the Monster Manual, the Player's Handbook, uh, Volo's Guide to Monsters, or any one of the other um, books that they sell here. You can also get it, like, if you aren't doing Dungeons & Dragons, let's say you're doing Pathfinder, they have a Pathfinder Monster Manual, and they all come with, like, pre-made stat blocks, um, tokens, all of the things that you, you could possibly need. After we dragged the guard out onto the, the screen here, we can find him in our journal. This is the journal up here in the top right of your little chat block here. Uh, and in here, you can affect his character sheet. We can do stuff with the character sheet. So let's say we, we have a guard, uh, and then let's say this guard is sadly up against a dragon of some kind. Oh, darn. Um, so there's a lot of different types of dragons. We're going to go ahead and just grab the adult black dragon and drop that bad boy down on the field. Well, the adult black dragon is here. We got a little guard right here. Man, this seems a little bit lopsided, but you know what? We're not worried about that. We're just talking about turn order. So this is how turn order works, and you're going to want to remind your players to do these things so it's a little less work on you as a DM. So let's say we've got our we've got our, our guard here, we've got our black dragon, and you know what? Maybe these are players of, of some kind doing something. Good stuff. Now what we want our players to do is we want them to select their token, right? Have the token selected, and then click initiative on their character sheet. You click initiative on the character sheet, it automatically rolls the initiative, and, like magic, appears in the turn order counter. Perfect. Now we do the again, we select the black dragon, and you see that back there, select him. Dull black dragon, click initiative. It shows up in the, uh, the roll here, and auto-populates into the turn order. Perfect. Now, you can, you see I was like, oh, oh no, they're in the wrong order. Well, you can just drag them and drop them if you'd like. You can delete it if you like. Or, worst comes to worst, you can, if you have a bunch of them, descending order, ascending order. Great. We can just do all of that, do it by alphabetically. All of these things are available to us. Uh, when a turn passes, let's say the adult black dragon uh, attacks the guard and misses, which likely wouldn't happen, but could, uh, you get to do the guard on the next turn, and you just click back and forth, and it highlights which ones, and your players get to see this block the entire time that you have it open. Uh, before we go ahead and clear this, I think I'm going to... Yeah, you know what? If you want to clear all the turns, you can remove them. Great. All of them are now gone. Now, let's say one of your players didn't click on their, on their token before rolling the dice. Well, you can right-click on any one of those player tokens, and this is where you're going to want to have your, your players' tokens in your own personal journal. You're going to want to have full access to all of this stuff because it's very important for you as a DM. And at the very top here, you hit add turn. Great. And they're like, oh, I just clicked initiative, but I didn't click my token. And you're like, oh, well, it's initiative 15. Great. You hit 15, you hit enter. Now it's on the list. And that's how you track initiative. Easy enough. Next down on the list is, this is just a die roller. If you don't feel like coming down into the block here, and I know you can't see my thing here real quick. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change this filter real quick. There we go. So now you can see the uh, the bottom of my roll here, which is, so you do slash roll or slash R something, you know? And you do it in a, in a die form. You do four or one or whatever, which is the number of dice you'll be rolling. D for the number of dice. And then what type of dice you'll be ro rolling. Very similarly up here, you'll be, you know, rolling each of these dice. You'll be like, oh, I want to roll a D20. Great. That's 1D20, 1D6, 1D12. Great. This one, you can be like, oh, I want to roll 2D8. Roll. And it does it automatically for you. So you don't even have to type it if you don't want to. It keeps hold of your last 10 rolls, etc., etc. Something to note 
if you have a roll that you've already done, if you hit just up and you're selected in here and you hit up on your keyboard, right? Just the, the arrow key up. You can scroll through the last rolls of yours. So if you hit up and down, you can find the ones that you want if you need to roll it again. Easy enough. So that's just the basic roll thing. This is just help documents and things like that. Hopefully our tutorial today in the very end of it, you're like, you know what? I don't need help documents. You, you do. You probably do. There's a lot of very good help tutorials on Roll20 all over YouTube. All over. That's how I learned how to do this. Um, but this is a very basic introduction to some of the tools that you have to at your, your disposal. Note that includes anything written in chat. Yes, that is that is a good note. Thank you, Duzen. So let's say we have our adult black dragon. And our adult black dragon, he has actually some abilities and stuff. Abilities that we can just post into the chat. So, like, if I hit up here in the chat block and we clicked on Frightful Presence, it'll have that there as well. And you can see my little block there. It's uh, It'll recall it out. So, that's something to think of. Um... I think next for this, we should probably go over how to roll a character. It's pretty basic, but it's useful uh, in a way for, for learning purposes. See how we're selected here? Select and move. Objects and tokens. Bye-bye. Selected and gone. So let's talk about some of the top stuff here. You've got your chat, which is where we've been making all the rolls and all the stuff pops up in. Great. This is where our, all of our assets are. You have your own personal library of things and where I have a bunch of things from different games and one shots and things that we've been preparing. These are custom uh, tokens that I've made for some of our players, custom backgrounds, etc. You also have your premium assets. Uh, there are some free ones that come whenever you have roll 20, which are really cool and whatever, and you have a bunch of different tokens of different things. Very interesting, very this good. Looks like It gives you a little preview of what the guys look like. There you go. Then you also have your marketplace purchases. We'll go over the marketplace in a little bit. Um, these are some of the ones that I have. Um, there's maps and tile sets and, and things that you can purchase. Uh, by very talented artists that put up their stuff on the World 20 Marketplace. Uh, and we will, we'll talk about those in a little bit as well. But I think what we need to look over next is the journal. This is where all of your stuff ends up. All right, we have players down here, right? These are the player character sheets, right? You can see all of these things. These are currently empty because they need to roll their characters still. Um, and then you have your enemies and stuff like that. I made a folder. You can add folders, characters, handouts. Handouts are files that you can drag and drop into here or you can you can write it and you can be like, oh no Lassie says someone I can't spell some anything fell into a well. Yeah. Lassie says someone fell into a well. And then when you save this and whatever and you can put these handouts into your players journals. You know, when they're there. Um, and I'm going to delete this because there's no need for me to have this. Great. And you can just, you know, put them under each of these various uh, headings. So what we're going to do, I think, after we start talking about this, is we're going to discuss some of the, the how to make a player things. So this is the compendium. The compendium is your end-all, be-all, uh, essentially, for what's accessible uh, in your Roll20 website, app, or whatever. Your compendium can get updated by things that you purchase at Roll20, like Monster Manuals, Volo's Guide, uh, Volo's Guide to Monsters, Player's Handbook, etc., etc. And so what that does is, like, if I want to learn about something, I'm like, oh, man, what is a what does a barbarian do? What is it? What is I can't spell barbarian. <laughs> so that would help. What is a barbarian? Well, look at that class, barbarian. And it goes through the whole thing about the whole class, all of the stuff, everything they get on each level. And then if you click on each of those things, you can get scrolled down to where those are, primal path, reckless attack. All of this stuff is in here. And this is stuff that they pulled directly from the player's handbook. Great. 
You can do that uh, with just classes. You can do it for weapons if you wanted a sword of some kind. You can see proficiencies for all these things, each of these different items. You can click on them, see exactly what they do, what their damage type is, how much damage they do, what properties they have, etc., etc. And obviously, like we saw before, when I type in dragon, we get a whole list of all of these different types of dragons. Great. Cool. The reason it takes so long to load is because there's a lot of dragons. Look at all these dragons. Look at all of these dragons. A lot of dragons. A lot of dragons. Um, but like any type of, of uh, enemy that you might want to use. Obviously, they have the indexes here. Items. Magical items. So like if you were like... Mm -hmm. Well, my, my players have a, a ring of some kind. What type of ring might they have? Well, you have ring mail, rings of all this stuff, ring of fire resistance, feather fall, evasion, ring of elemental command. Click on them. Gives you a description of exactly what those things do. Cool. Uh, the next part on the list is the playlist, the jukebox. Right now we're playing music straight through roll 20. Everything that you play here, your players can hear. Cool. So what we're going to talk about right now is how we do this and how we add these things. This is a very brief, brief discussion, I think, uh, before we talk about characters and things like that. You want to add some ambiance to your game. Great. Well, look at this. I have the tavern song from The Witcher in here. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. But also, when I'm making a... We're working on a horror one-shot right now. I also have a, something called a, a Barovian Castle. Oh man, that sounds real good. Gonna put your players in the mood, right? Maybe they're at a fancy dinner party. Fancy. You say, well, DM Robo, how do I get these into my into my game? Well, you hit the add button right at the top. You can do a track, or you can break them up into playlists. Playlist just gives you a new folder you can organize stuff under. Great. Tracks. Well, they bring up this fancy little jukebox. Hey, that's pretty neat. Now, what do I do with this? Well, you can select each of these different things that you want from Tabletop Audio. Tabletop Audio is actually a website that you can also use and download directly to your computer. Very cool. Uh, they have a lot of good stuff. The um, Nightmare Existential Dread Fancy Dinner Party Barovian Castle. All of those things are technically from Tabletop Audio. Very cool. Um, then they have the options for battle bards. This one is interesting. Um, you actually, if you go to like NPC scripts, you, they literally talk to you. Welcome, honored guests. Come in, unburden yourselves, and rest your weary feet upon our velvet lined chairs. Quench your parched throats with a mug of ale and warm your bones by our hearth. You see? They talk to you. Uh, in Comtech, I've actually not found anything that I want to do. I wanted to see, like, what they actually had in here. Um, but they do have, like, some interesting things. Uh, and you might need to just go through it manually to find anything, because I'm not super sure what they have. They have a lot of stuff by Kevin McLeod, though, obviously. Fanburst is where you can just type in whatever you want, and it's going to go find it for you. Uh, let's say you want some of the... Uh, the Witcher stuff, right? And you go Witcher, and they got, oh, wow, that's a lot of Witcher stuff. Or like what I had typed in previously, uh, Divinity. Original. Good, I could actually type today. Original Sin, right? And you have all of the options here, and you can be like, oh, main theme. Yeah. Or any of the other things that you want in here. And then you want to add it, you just hit the plus button. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Um, so Doozin in chat just said, I was hoping to add some Adrian Von Ziegler. Well, we can... Von? Let's see if it pulls up anything. Adrian Von Ziegler. Nocturnus. Looks like they got a little bit in here. Easy peasy. Then you just add it into your thing, and it shows up on the right-hand side in your jukebox. Forever. Technically, you can right-click and just delete it. It's fine. Uh, you also get individual sliders. Yeah, easy enough to, like, turn this on and be like, oh, I want it louder or quieter or whatever. Right? So you can adjust it for all of your players. So this is what I advise for my players. I'm like, okay, I leave it at a, at a volume. Because this volume is what my stream hears, what my show hears. And then I tell my players, okay, if you want it louder or softer, you go over to your own personal settings, right where that cogwheel is, and you set your main music level. You can make it louder or quieter. And just do it that way. 
And if you if you are, are feeling inclined, it's like, oh, it's definitely not even loud enough. If you go into your actual Windows settings and change what your uh, browser volume output level is, you can adjust it there as well, just in case it's not perfect for you. Yeah. Um, so there you go. I don't use any macros, so we're not going to talk about that. I just it, I do not see a reason to use that yet. I haven't found a reason to use that yet. Let's talk about characters. Let's add a character. So what they give you is just this blank thing. Um, we're going to name this guy Iron Man. Why not? You select what journals they go in. Uh, your players, you're going to want them to be in your players' journals. And you're going to always want the DM to be able to edit and control all of the player stuff just in case they have like internet out outages or if you need to add something to their player hand or to their uh, character sheet anything like that uh the files are always going to be something like oh this is just a picture of them or there's a token that they want to use um the token thing you select one out of the ones that you have so let me let me go to my library real quick and just pull out Hathel here Hathel's in one of our games zoom in on the bad boy and just bring him over here uh, so, Hathel, as I honestly already turned it up too loud, uh, Hathel over here, since he's selected, we can go, oh, yep, we want to use this token for this guy. You selected token, automatically selected, and then this token will be linked to this character. All right? Forever and always. Forever and always. You can also put your little biography down in here. GM can make notes about the character in here. And it all functions very similarly like to any of your other Word document type things. Great. So you hit enter. You want to make this character very cool. Character sheet. That is, uh, that is the easiest way to go. Now, Roll20 has added something very interesting. I don't, I don't want to say it's very good yet. They are working on it. And it's called Character Mancer. Character Mancer helps you roll up a level one character. Or create an NPC. I always choose to edit the sheet directly currently because the Character Mancer is not fully fleshed out yet. It's just not. Um, all right. In Dungeons and Dragons, you have multiple options on how you make a character or how you roll stats or how you do whatever. I am always a fan of rolling for your stats. So, rolling for your stats in, in different games can be done different ways. Uh, some people, like, make your character rolls only the 3d6. And whatever that is, whatever that number is, that's what your stat blocks are going to be. Uh, most DMs do, do what I do, which is you do 4d6. Four six-sided dice. And then you drop the lowest of those six. Sounds easy enough, right? So it gives them a little bit of leeway on, on some of their stuff. So Iron Man. Iron Man uh, rolls a 12, 13, 9, 16, 10, 13. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have six stats here. Right? And so we just enter them in. Uh, you get to choose where they, where they go and where they want to be and whatever they're going to be. Basically, you end up choosing this... Uh, based on what class you want to be, right? You're like, oh, if I'm going to be a barbarian, then obviously I want to be stronger. If, I wanna, if I'm a bard, my charisma is most important. If I'm a cleric, uh, wisdom is highest, right? Like that kind of thing. A monk can be more balanced, or uh, excuse me, a fighter can be more balanced. A monk has dexterity bone, like it wants to have more dexterity. And there's all of these things that you need to read through your classes before you decide where these points go, right? So that's the very like bare minimum on, on like, how to make uh, a character and how to roll those things into roll 20. And then you, what you would do is you just enter those in. You'd be like, all right, this is now 16. This one is going to be a 12. Uh, whatever one of these, it was like a nine. Uh, and you choose these based on like how good you want to be at stuff, right? Based on your character. Uh, 13, 12, oh, I, had a, I had a separate 13. Obviously, this is not ideal for any situation or whatever, but we're not worried about that because I'm not even choosing a class or a race. We're just talking about how to use Roll20. Now, when you when you have a, a certain class, and let's say we just choose Barbarian, uh, this will auto-fill some of the things. You get an automatic rage block, 
Very cool. You get your, your saving throws automatically filled in with proficiencies. Proficiency, the checkbox here, means it adds this bonus to whatever this bonus would be normally. So additionally, if we had a couple of things, I know that um, as a barbarian, we could have like a proficiency in survival perception. Uh, I believe we can have something in ath or athletics, right? And it adds that little proficiency bonus in there. Now, let's say your DM's like, hey, I want you to make a athletics check for me. Easy enough. You go to your character sheet, click athletics. Boom, rolls it for you. Um, when you set up your sheets the first time, it'll roll twice like this because everything that you do is set up to roll two times for advantage or disadvantage. The way that I fix this for my games and my stuff is you go into your roll queries here after you go to the little cog wheel and you go advantage toggle. Gives you a nice little selection up here at the very top of your sheet that shows you when you're rolling an advantage, disadvantage, or normal after your DM tells you what it's at. So let's say we're making an athletics check at advantage. We click this here. We click athletics. And you see how it highlights the higher number and lowlights the lower number. Rolled at advantage. Great. When you do it normally, it just rolls once. Hey, look, we crit. That's very nice. Crits show up as green. Critical fails show up as red. Uh, and that's kind of just how that works. Uh, the rest of this stuff is is essentially you fill it out as you make your character. Now let's say we're we've made a we're making a barbarian, and we want him to have a big old sword. I'm like, well, I want him to have a sword, right? Well, we go to our swords. Uh, let's say he's proficient with a great sword. We want to be good at it. What you can do while you have this open is you just drag and drop into your character sheet. And it just populates down there. You see, that's right behind me. There it is. Now, we want him to have a great sword. We want him to use one. Well, we take his great sword here in the items block. Drag. Drop. He has a great sword down here. Has a weight of six pounds. And boom. Automatically places it in here. He wants to make an attack with his great sword. Boom. Makes an attack with his great sword. Just clicks right on here. Now, you can open this up and see the breakdown on stuff. He makes that attack with strength. He's proficient with the great sword, so he makes it with proficiency. Gives you the damage plus what attribute that that damage is done with and any other bonuses. Crit range, magic stuff, type of damage. Crit if there is any other extra damage. Um, and then you can add a description. It's like, cleaves the enemy. Obviously, you should probably have something a little bit better in there. But when you do that, it gives you a description that it cleaves the enemy. Yeah. Uh, let's say you want to delete it. You hit the little uh, locks down here, and this works for any and all of these things. You unlock it, and you can uh, trash the thing if you want to, or you can move it up and down. Let's say he had multiple weapons. Uh, let's see. He's got, like, a spear. Why not? Drop a spear into here, and he's got both of them here. Spear one-handed, spear two-handed, and we can kind of just move it around based on what you want at the top and things like that. Cool. Uh, these are just trackers. You can always have more of these other resources. Let's say this is torches. Torched. <laughs> he got torched. Torches. He, let's say he has uh, 10 torches right now out of a total that he had at one point in time of 15 or something. It's just a, a tracker to keep. Let's say he has three daily rages, and he's already used two of them, so he has one remaining, right? And you can just move that up and down there. Easy. Uh, features and traits. Mm a lot of the times you're gonna have to add these physically okay uh roll 20 and the compendium doesn't necessarily cover a lot of the features and traits what they have added is at least where it comes from the source of the type and the, the racial and whatever um so how you find those things like let's say oh we're barbarian class barbarian as a, as a Barbarian, we gain some class features and, and things. Um, let's say we have uh, we have Rage. All right, you're like, okay, cool. We get Rage. This is what it is. Source, well, it's from our, uh, it's from our class. Source type, uh, it's going to be Barbarian level 1. And then generally what, what I tell my players is to do is just take this if i don't mess this up copy paste control c control v baby and now it's all in there all the data that you're ever going to need uh you close it up like that 
And man, that looks really cluttered, doesn't it? That doesn't look very good. Well, if you click on the name, it minimizes it. Now let's say your DM's like, hey man, I don't remember what Rage does. What does Rage do? You come on over to your uh, to your sheet here after I move Barbarian out of the way. And you click the speech bubble. Post it all in the chat so everyone can see it. Be like, yeah man, my ability does this. Check it! And then they can't question you, right? It's there. It's in the ability. Done. Done and done. Now, things where, where things get a little bit interesting, uh, for sure, is... Let's talk about spell books, right? Uh, the bio tab is is generally just for your, your player to add in, like, what treasure they're holding or what gear. They have allies, things that they want to keep track of. All, of. all of this stuff. Description of character appearance. It's all very personal to them. The spell book is, is interesting uh, in that they, it's gotten a lot better recently it's gotten a lot better our barbarian barbarians don't generally have spells but you know what we don't we don't really care um so let's do let's take a fire spell for us for instance so we go to our compendium we look up fire well spells are right up here right like okay well firebolt we can just click and drag into the spell book here it's a cantrip cool that worked out real well we're real well now let's say he also has fireball well, you click and drag, it automatically knows that Fireball is a level 3 spell, and it places it thusly. Now, what is this little dot? Well, some of your players may have spells that they have to prepare daily. This is how you know whether or not your players your players have prepared a spell. So your paladins or clerics or anyone that needs to prepare spells daily will click on the ones that they need to prepare or they've had prepared. Now, let's say we want to, we want to cast a spell. Click on it. Cast at what level? Well, it's a level 3 spell, so it doesn't have anything lower than a level 3 available to us, right? You guys can't see the drop-down. That's really weird. Well, there's a drop-down here. I'm currently highlighting stuff. That's really weird. Uh, and we can make it level 4. We can make it level 5 or any other subsequent level above it if spell slots are available. And we can cast it. Gives you your DC. I don't know why it has a DC of 0. Dex. Oh, because we don't have any of our, we don't have spell save DC or bonuses because we're a barbarian. Ha! So, because our barbarian can't cast spells, he doesn't have a spell save DC. Makes sense. Let's make his spell save DC strength. That changes it a little bit, right? Alright, let's roll fireball again. Level 3. There you go. Difficulty class to beat. Damage rolled down here. You can see what the damage roll was. All of those things. What save it should be. Etc. Etc. Um, obviously, if you go into the cogwheel here, you have plenty of ways to adjust, change, um, add your own spells, all of the availabilities for customization of, of, of things, all available in here. Uh, if I if you ever have questions about spells or things like that, this is a little bit more in depth on a very particular thing, and we're kind of doing a brief overview of all of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it be. If you have questions about spells, you guys are more than welcome to ask them after we're done reviewing all of this. So that's kind of the basics of, of like the character sheet, right? If you have your maximum hit points up here, your current hit points here, you, you can track them thusly. I mean, it, it's, it's all very intuitive. Um, as far as I can, like, as long as you spend some time with the sheet, you know, spend some time with it and figure it out. It, it, it all is, is very intuitively laid out and I, and I'm very, I'm happy with how this this looks, right? Okay. Uh, the, the next thing that we're going to talk about is I think we're going to look at a map. Like, you're like, okay, Joel, I want to make a map. What do I do? Well, I don't really have a whole lot of time for things. I, I, I purchase a lot of my maps from very skilled artists that are on the Roll20 website. All right. So that's what we're going to we're going to take a quick look at here. I have the Roll20 uh, website open in front of me here. Uh, I am a distinct fan of things that Gabriel Picard does. Not hashtag ad. I just really like his work, and I use a lot of it. And he's got a lot of different options here. And you're like, oh, man, I, I, need, a, I need a village. A village for my, my, my guys to be in. And I don't, I don't know how to... I don't want to draw this, and I want it to look pretty. Well, lucky for you, they make things like this. That's really neat, right? Like, look at that. There's a whole burned-out village already made for you. And all you have to do 
is get it, put it, and it automatically loads into Roll20 after you purchase it in your account, and it's available to you. Cool. So, for the ones that I have currently purchased, endorsed, hashtag endorsed, ha not hashtag sponsored, yes. Um, I really enjoy his, and, and you know, to each their own, if you like customiz customizing things and whatever, um, Quick Encounters has been a lifesaver for me. Now, what Quick Encounters is, is, is already, is like ready-made maps. Just ready-made maps. Um, so what we do on our map is we go to our maps and backgrounds. We take our map from here. We click and we drag. Look at that. There's a map. We make it fill the area that we want it to fill. I'm going to go ahead and drag it through the whole thing that we've got available to us here. And now we've got a map. We go back to our tokens. And now our little player can move around the map. Right? Very cool. Very cool. Um, but let's say we want a map that's a little bit more enclosed, right? Like, they can see everything on this map. But what if we want them to be somewhere a little closer? Somewhere like a dungeon of some kind? Well, we can we can do that. Um, what I'm going to choose here uh, is I'm going to go to the clan caves. Now, a lot of this stuff is is very loopy and whatever. It's not very square like a lot some of the pre-made stuff that you might get if you use donjons or something. Uh, and that's fine, because, and I'm going to show you why that's fine. It makes it all the better, in my opinion, to have organic-looking areas. So I'm just going to pick the, the first one up here. You know, we're going to pick one with, uh, with a whole bunch of, of stuff on it already. Why not? Then we got these clan caves. Uh, there's tents in them and stuff, and there's all this, there's like fire pits and things. Right? And we're going to have our characters move throughout this. Well, well, DM Robo, they can see everything. What's the point of being in a cave if they can see everything? Shouldn't it be dark? Shouldn't there just be light sources around? Yeah, you know what? Probably. So what we do is we go up to our top bar here. We go in. And we want, we want dynamic lighting enabled. And we want global illumination off. We're going to enforce line of sight. We're only an update on drop. This helps for your... Basically, this is CPU usage and RAM usage right here. Okay? And restrict movement. You're going to want to restrict the movement to the interior of the walls that you create. All right? Oh, man. Now it's really dark. Uh-oh. Well, that's weird. So, now you're like, okay, cool. But now... But some of my characters have, like, dark vision or carrying torches or, or something like that. Well, we go into our character here. We can have them emit light, right? So let's say they have a, a dark vision. And I, I think personally, the dark vision in uh, Dungeons and Dragons is way overpowered. It's way too strong. Because it, it, like, it's like magically enhanced dark vision. It's just way too strong. But you know what? That's fine. Uh, let's say they have a dark vision of 60 feet. That is the light radius. And then the start of the dim area. And this is where it starts getting dim to them. I like putting it at 30, like maybe half of what it is. Like 30 in dark vision is, is like really, yeah. It, it, it helps them feel close, dark, inside, interior. Um, all players see the light as if someone is like holding a torch, right? Let's say they have like a torch light of, and it goes out 30 feet, dim light starting at 15. All players can see the torch light. And that'll show up on everyone's on everyone's uh, screen. Has sight means that your player can actually see. They're not just emitting the light, but they can see the light. Well, now look. Now they have this, this bubble of light around them. Well, Ro DM Robo, it's going over the walls. That's not how caves work. You know what? You're right. That is, that is, not, that is not how caves work. Now, this is where we, uh, we get back into our layer down here, our good friend Dynamic Lighting. Dynamic lighting is a lot of fun, uh, but it is kind of tedious to set up. I tend to put my walls uh, as a bright yellow color, and I keep it small, uh, and I use the polygon. Now, what that does is is I click, and then I just kind of click uh, around the map. I, uh, I somewhat hover around the map and, and create where these walls would be. 
Uh, and we go we go around as, as much as we would like. Now, let's say we, uh, we're like, oh, okay, we get to a point where we don't close it off or anything. Again, remember when I said you could right-click to end something? You right-click it, and it that wall takes hold. All right, so let's do the other side. We do that real quick. Go around like this. I'm not going to do all of it because it's, it's like I said, it's a kind of a, like a tedious endeavor, but it creates a really cool effect uh, for your players, for sure. And obviously, I'm, I'm not doing this as well as I normally would. I would I would take a little bit more time and care, uh, for sure, for, for some of my show maps. Um, but for, for this demonstration, I think it's good enough that we just show how this works. Okay, so I'm like, I'm just busy clicking all the way around here. See, if, I, if it meets up, it automatically dims this. And now this is what, what you can see. Um, so let's go back to the object layer. Now look as the light maneuvers through the actual map. Now you see how it opens up into the area and is blocked by this wall. So they can't see through these things. Um, I wonder if this will work for me real quick. I used to do this for... This, this is going to double up on the music, so hang on a sec. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop here. When I open this up, this is going to double up on the music. Um, and so what I'm going to do is you have to move the player sheet to where they're going to be on the map. And this will update them. Eh. Oh, because it's not in my player sheet. Hang on. I can't even, I can't even see this guy. Um, so I need him to be... In my player sheet, can be controlled by. Shouldn't that that should update it, right? Man, where's he at? Oh, because I didn't give him a a character sheet, did I? Iron Man. Iron Man. Edit. Why is he not letting me work? Control L shows in demo mode. Oh, you're right. You're totally right. That's actually way easier. Thank you. Uh, control L will let you see what the players will see. Thank you, Q. I totally forgot about that. Hey, Bear. What's up, bud? Um, I totally forgot that that was an option. So this is what they'll see. It's just pitch black darkness. Now, remember when I was, like I set up their dark vision? So their dim light doesn't even come out till here. Let's 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 uh, let's alter that a little bit so we can see what dim light actually would would look like. Let's go thirty feet here and fifteen here. Save that. Ah, yeah. Look at that. It brings it so much closer in. So this is like if they had a torch, right? They can't see very far outside of what's happening. I think it's like this. It's very. I think it's very cool. Um, now let's say. So, did you see what I tried to do there? I tried to drag it over the wall. But because I, because I said you can't do that, like I said that in the setup here. Only update on drop and restrict movement. It's restrict movement. You can't just drag it over the wall. So your players can't just be like, oh, I want to go over here. And quick drag and drop. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You got to follow the cave. You got to get in there and be all in the dark. Right? So if you hit control, I thought it was control L again. Nope, just double click. You can double click off the token and uh, it'll bring back up what you can see as a DM. Um, uh, question Q, you don't need to add, add advanced fog of war question mark. If you have dynamic lighting, Dynamic lighting is limited to the pro version of Roll20. No, you do not enable advanced fog of war. Okay? Dynamic lighting is its own thing. You don't have to have any of these enabled if you use it dynamic lighting. Okay, so now you're like, okay, well, uh, maybe there's a thing. Well, let's let's take our black dragon and bring it out here. Look at that. Now we, have, we can see what the black dragon sees too, right? As the DM, we know what light they can see. Um, so let's say our black dragon's like waiting over here. And we have our, our hero over here, Hathel, wandering, wandering through the map here. And your player's like, okay, well, 
Well, I wanna, I wanna move. I wanna move up to the that little that little gap there. And you're like, okay, go ahead and go ahead and make your move. And they they move cautiously up. And like, okay, well, I don't see anything. I'm gonna move out here. Oh no, what's that over there? Uh oh. And then they get closer, and their dim light reveals that oh my god, it's a black dragon. Yeah. Helps you kind of uh, keep this hidden, keep surprises. If you really want to surprise them, you move something to the GM layer. And you go, okay, what does Hathel see? Well, if it's it's great out here. I'm the DM, so I can see them all the time. They can't see anything. They don't see this at all. Yeah. And that's, uh... That's the real way to scare your players. So, what else, what else can we do here? Um, well... What I like to do... Uh, a lot of, a lot of the time is provide light in the environment so you see like there's these little little fireplaces and stuff little little fireplaces around well what, what if we want one of them to have a fire well we can come up here and we can uh, let's put in fire it'll go through a web search it shows me my assets that I already have shows me some stuff that we might miscellaneously have there's a magic fire spell template uh, shows you some premium assets that might be that are available on roll 20 and it also just shows you random stuff on online and you're like oh well that's really cool how do i use these i really want i mean like this seems super useful i don't have to pay for anything i just put in fire and man there's a lot of cool stuff so maybe if we specify campfire that's a nice looking campfire look at that click drag have it on the uh, token sheet right here. And we have a little campfire. Uh-oh. DM Robo. It won't sit in the spot that I want it in. Well, if you hold Alt on your keyboard and place it, you can place it anywhere you like. Release Alt, and it's there now. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it back up here to somewhere we've already gotten stuff figured out in. Uh, I'm actually going to... Can I... Oh, I put this one on the map accidentally. Yikes. I'm being a goob. There it is. Token layer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete the dragon here. So now we have this little fireplace. And we're like, okay. Well, we want the fireplace to emit some light. Well, let's say the fire's 30, 15, dim. And then all players see the light. So now it just has some light around it. Now, what, is, what does our buddy Hathel see as he, as he rounds the corner here? Oh, wait. What's that over there? You can see some light. Huh. That's odd. Oh, look. A campfire. Huh. That's cool. We can see the light. See, as he, if he's out of his line of sight, like, oh, what's that? There's a light over there. Huh. What's that light at the end of the tunnel? It's a campfire. And the campfire lights this area while he's uh while he's not even there. So that's kind of a, a brief tutorial on maps. Uh using advanced fog or not the advanced fog of war, excuse me. The dynamic lighting. Characters, tokens, tools, music. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, I'm gonna leave this open to the uh, the open forum here. Are there are there any questions uh, that you have about roll twenty using a map? What to do? Um, I think the only thing I might have missed is is what if you had your own map? Let's say uh, you're you can upload anything to your assets here. So if you had a map, let's say I might have one way back when. Yeah, like I had a bandit hideout that I that I added, and it's in here, and I can just click and drag it out here. Let's say you have a personal file you want to use, or like a a made up cave that you you found online or something. You can you can always upload it into into Roll Twenty and utilize it. Just the same way that I clicked and dragged it over on the map screen is exactly how you would do it. So, chat, does that cover it for you? We get every did we get everything down that you wanted to have down? 
Because if so, I think that is the end of our brief tutorial into Roll20.net. Hopefully that was helpful for some of you guys.